Joining us to discuss Ford's announcement today is Mike Murphy from Quartz. How's it going, Mike? Hey, not too bad. It's great to have you back. It's been a little while. So tell us a little bit about what Ford is planning specifically for the year 2021, firmly in the future. Yeah, it feels like a really long time away. When they yeah. first said that, I was like, man, that's a while. And then I counted with one hand. I'm like, oh, it's not very far. <laughs> um, <laughs> but basically, Good Ford uh, announced today, they, they've been coy about this before, but they've finally given a time frame for when they're going to have some sort of self-driving vehicle on the road. So in 2021, they're going to have a, a car or some moving object with wheels that doesn't have a steering wheel or an accelerator or a brake um, that you'll be able to to hail like an Uber um, that will drive itself with, with no help from you. Um, and they put a hard deadline of, of 2021, 20, or they said that is their intention. And obviously, a lot of things have to fall into place between now and then, but that's what they announced today. I mean, is it is it a gutsy move to put a firm date on something like this? Because I mean, really, when you when you're talking about like a in a world where <laughs> you know you're out of the, in a world. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Okay, snap back to reality. Um, where where you're driving around and you're surrounded by you know vehicles that are literally driving themselves, and there's no way in there for anyone to actually you know stop the vehicle. Right. The part part of this plan is that there's there's no handover function. I mean, it, it, setting a five-year date date for that is that is that a lot to expect of themselves? Do you think they'll make it? Well, I think yeah. On, on the one hand, it is um, because that's a lot. Like there, basically, there was this kind of like I got the sense it was almost like subtweeting where they were basically kind of saying we're not going to have the handoff between a human and um, the machine because there's no good way to do that. And I kind of got this feeling they were talking about Tesla and the autopilot and the issues they've had recently and it was like mm. well okay if that's the case doing the much harder thing is probably not necessarily the right answer to that question mm. but on the other hand um you know volvo has said they're going to have a car on the road by i think 2019 or 2018 that's very soon um so you know when i've spoken to ford in the past i i spoke to ceo mark fields when i was at ces and he was very coy about a timeline and he said we're not going to say anything until we're sure and I, I actually went out to Detroit uh, back in March, um, and I, I visited the, the self-driving lab there, and, you know, I asked them about their plans. And there's this very methodical approach. You know, they, they, they didn't name names, but they made a point of saying that they're not like a lot of these other companies that are getting into it on the Silicon Valley side of things, um, where they just want to announce big things and, oh, my God, look at this. They're a car company, and they want to make a car that doesn't do bad things. Cars are reliable. Cars are safe. You know that sorts of thing. Um, so they weren't in a position to say, "Yes, we're going to have one of these on the road in X years." At that point, and I guess in the last few months, things have progressed enough that they feel confident that in five years, which is a ways away, um, that they will be able to do that. But I mean, this is it, self-driving cars for them really to work. It almost, we've talked about this before, it almost seems like all the cars have to be self-driving. So if Ford's the only one that's saying 2021, you still have everyone else uh, out there that's not Ford. That's, I mean, everybody else has to catch up. So it seems like it would be a mess with half the cars being self-driving and half not. I'm, I'm inclined to agree. And I mean, this is always going to be the case, I think. I mean, even if every single company, whatever their capabilities, somehow manages by like, 2022 to have uh, self-driving cars available, we're not all going to be able to afford those right away. We're not all going to be able to go out and buy them. We're not all going to need new cars. There's going to be decades, if not like half a century of petrol cars and, and normal, just regular human-driven cars on the road. And there's just going to be an infrastructural mess for a while. And, you know, the at least in the U.S., the Obama administration has earmarked money and and wants to to push this forward and sees it as the future of transportation for better or for worse in the u.s but i mean yeah there's definitely going to be a weird period where there's no right answer for this um uh that being said i do wonder with the way that ford has said they're gonna get these cars on the road if there's actually going to be some kind of uh you know caching of that statement where these are only going to be ride hailing cars you know kind of like an uber i wonder if there's going to be very specific routes that they can go on in very specific, easily to map towns. Um, you know, if they won't operate in inclement weather or if they won't operate at night, 
they've just said that they're going to have self-driving cars. They're not saying that they're going to have a self-driving car that you can use in every instance all the time. So I, I do think that that is probably still a little further ways away. Yeah, and starting with the uh, ride-sharing aspect, I mean, I have to imagine this is this is potentially an approach that others, you know, other uh, manufacturers are going to follow in too. It's a nice way to kind of step in a little bit without just opening the floodgates and saying, "All right, everybody, it's autonomous or, or bust." Um, <laughs> what kind of investments has Ford made at this point to kind of anchor these plans so far? So they've had a few in the past. Um, they bought a company called Pivotal Labs. Um, I think that was this year. 2016 is just blind, blowing by. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they they announced a bunch today, uh, a bunch of pretty sizable investments. The first one being, uh, along with Baidu, uh, they've invested $150 million into this company called Velodyne, which if you've um, seen any of the self-driving cars on the road or online or anything, you always see they have the little spinny um, kind of hockey puck shaped things, either on the top or the sides. Those are uh, laser radar cameras that uh, usually are made by Velodyne. So they're quickly becoming the go-to company for that sort of technology. Um, yeah, those things right there, one of those hockey puck dealies. Um, so Ford has put a, a, a lot of money into that company and their technology. Uh, everyone is, or not everyone, but a lot of companies are using them. Google uses them. Um, I think... Uh, Volvo and Toyota are also using them. Um, but they've also invested in a few other companies, um, an Israeli um, machine learning company to help them basically process all of the information that those cameras are seeing better, and a computer vision company. Uh, they've licensed their technology uh, to to basically, again, like better understand what they're seeing. You know, it, it's very different to see a deer in the road versus a bear versus a human, but we know how to perceive those differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the self-driving car will. So uh, here in Northern California, we have the smart train that we just got, um, which has been talked about for ages. And you know, in, now that it's actually almost ready to drive with people, it doesn't um, it doesn't go where anyone wants it to go. <laughs> it goes, you know, it's on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge, where you know there hasn't been a lot of public transportation for lots of reasons. Um, it's expensive, and it just goes from one point to another point, and then people can't have no way to get to where they're going. Um, and this sound, this sort of thing sounds like the same thing, like the same thing as public transportation. Here's a big announcement, and it's going to be wonderful. But the practicality of it, when it comes it right down to it, like these self driving car, these Ford self-driving ride hailing, ride sharing cars don't see, they seem to be running into the same problems as public transportation has run into for uh, lots of decades. <laughs> <laughs> it could absolutely, absolutely end up playing out that way. Um, what, I, what I'd counter it with is if you look at something like the Docklands uh, Light Railway in London, which is a driverless train and has been since it was in, uh, developed in the 80s, I think it went to service in the 90, early 90s. Um, they've had that forever. And when it first started, it was very much, nobody lives here. You know, you're putting this scary train away from people. So I guess if it crashes, no one's hurt. Uh, it turns out it's the most efficient part of, um, the London underground system now. And, um, partly because of the infrastructure and the fact there was no one else there, um, the newest, um, kind of jazziest parts of London have, have built up around it. Like, you know, the Olympics and Canary Wharf, that sorts of thing. So, you know, if if Ford or or, or whoever decides that um, I don't know, Ann Arbor is is the place to be. That's where they're testing a lot of these cars with the University of Michigan uh, or Michigan State. I probably shouldn't confuse those. I think a lot of Michiganders really care about yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> the blue one. Um, the, <laughs> uh, but like, if they decide, you know, we've got the infrastructure here, and there's so much technology and so much money here now because these wonderful cars are driving us all around, and we have so much free time now, maybe that'll happen. But yeah, I mean, I, I think in the in the short term, it is very much like a a really nice PR move. I and probably a million other journalists jumped on it. It was like, man, this is big news. But you know, when you start to reflect on it, you're like, they didn't announce a self-driving you know, Ford Fusion. They didn't announce a self-driving F-150. They just said some car with a Ford badge on it will be available somewhere for some period of time five years from now. With no steering wheel. With no steering wheel. <laughs> right, yeah. And I mean, the, uh, the Ford CEO, Mark Fields, said during the announcement, he said the nature of ownership is changing. Do you think that's a kind of a bitter pill to swallow for uh, companies like Ford, or do you think it's just kind of business as usual at this point? 
I think at this exact point, it is definitely business as usual. But that being said, Ford definitely seems to be realizing that people like myself and you know younger younger people um, aren't necessarily needing to buy cars either because of um, better infrastructure in their towns or even in their like municipalities, um, or because things like Uber are becoming so easily available. You know, Fields is realizing that why not sell to the Uber driver instead of the end consumer if those are the people buying the cars? And, you know, why not provide that service uh, as we already have so many of these cars around? Um, and he's he's been making this point all year. Um, my belief, my guess is that, you know, when he announced the Ford Smart Mobility um, initiative uh, earlier this year, this was always the intention. This was, you know, they've always said that this is going to be part of the stated goal of, of this Smart Mobility future world where no one has a car but it's still Ford in your life like this is what they were envisioning so I think th I think they more than uh, some of the other American car companies seem to have realized the writing on the wall whether that means that they still have a business in 40 50 years um, that's the size of what it is now it's it's obviously very hard to say yeah well, I, I am 100% behind the self-driving cars. I want them right now. I don't like driving. Um, but, and, you know, they save lives. Like, uh, just the idea of getting drunk drivers off the roads, the idea of, you know, just having texter, texter and drivers off the road, you know, it saves hundreds of lives. But, of course, uh, we are also talking about just putting that choice into uh, a robot's hands. And, and you also wrote today about MIT's moral machine. Tell us a little bit about that. So yeah, this is a pretty crazy uh, thought experiment that the uh, Media Lab at MIT has uh, put out. Anyone can go to it. I think it's moralmachine.com. Um, and it's literally this quiz that basically um, takes an old philosophical um, argument, you know, kind of thought experiment. The, they call it the trolley experiment. Um, and, and modernizes it for something that might actually happen. And as you can see right here, basically what's happening is a self-driving car either with or without people, um, has had its brakes cut or, or something is going wrong with its brakes, and it has to decide whether to kill someone by going straight or someone by veering off to the, uh, to the side of the road. Um, and basically, MIT wants to know what you would do in each of these situations. Um, and the weird thing is, like, yeah, in and of itself, you assume it's, like, very utilitarian and, like, you know, the, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few sort of thing. But MIT's thing, for some reason, gives you a lot of information about all of the people that you're killing. So, like, right in this one, the people on the left um, are homeless people and robbers. You're basically deciding if you want to kill. And the other ones are doctors. It's like, okay, I don't think a self-driving car or a normal person would very easily necessarily be able to tell that in, like, a split second. Like, this one, it's like you're killing either athletes or just, like, some fat people. Like, literally, <laughs> the, the guy on the right there, is, his label is a very large man. Well, and it's like... A normal person couldn't figure that out, but, like, that's the dystopian future, right? Like, minority report, like, criminals will wear some sort of sensor on their body that says, I'm a criminal, and a self-driving car would know that, and then kill them. But, of course, in the Tom Cruise movie, he's not really a criminal. Someone just stuck that badge on him, and, you know, then, then hilarity ensues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so I guess I guess their, their point behind this is to kind of show you that there very rarely is going to be a right answer in these situations. Um but yeah, I mean, in the future, you look at you know Minority Report or Judge Dredd or any of those movies. Like, yeah, you know, Dred Judge Dredd always scared me as a kid because it's basically like the cops can just like kill you if they don't like you, basically, because everything's illegal in the future. And it's like, yeah, there might be a point where like these cars have that kind of um, volition and that kind of um, morality imbued in them by a third party, which is really weird. Um, and I think that's what they're trying to show here. Apparently, you just killed a lot of dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's um, Brian, not me. <laughs> that's totally <laughs> Brian, too. Way to go, Brian. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I mean, it, it, and I think that's what MIT is trying to show here is, like, there is going to be some very, very iffy situations in the future, but these shouldn't outweigh the fact that roughly 100 people a day die in motor accidents in the U.S., and if we cut that number down to five, or zero, or even if we cut it down to 80, you know, do we, do we think that that is better and more important than the fact that the machine is the one that's done the killing mm -hmm. as opposed to a kid who isn't paying attention on their phone or a drunk driver or someone who's having a heart attack? Um, 
and and that's the thing that we as a society have to figure out. Yeah. 